Today we will perform a Case 1, Case 2 carrier landing. This will be very similar to the VFR field overhead pattern. In fact, Navy pilots land at airfields much like they do on the boat to maintain this perishable skill. In regard to a Case 2 landing, this would be the visual approach element of the landing after being guided in from the Marshall Stack CV-1 approach. Case 1 is defined as having a 3,000 foot minimum cloud ceiling and 5 nautical miles of visibility. For today's lesson though, we are going to keep the aircraft carrier stationary so we can provide some gates that will assist you in the pattern. Press spacebar to continue. Ahead of you is a series of gates that you will fly through. These are designed to instruct you on where you should be during the pattern. You will start the pattern at 800 feet and 350 knots just starboard of the boat. During this phase of the landing, lower your arrestor hook by moving the arrestor hook handle in the down position. First starting out, we will not break into the pattern until 1.5 nautical miles past the bow of the boat. This will give you plenty of time to get on speed in the downwind leg. At the break, you will make a level turn with the G of 1% of your airspeed. In this case, 3.5 G for 350 knots. As your speed decreases, relax the G to match the speed. You may need to relax or tighten the turn to roll out 1.3 to 1.4 mile of being the boat. At 180 degrees of turn, level out on the downwind leg and descend to 600 feet you should be below 250 knots. Once below 250 knots, lower your landing gear and set the flaps to full. Press spacebar to continue. Once on the downwind leg, establish yourself at 600 feet and slow the aircraft to an on-speed angle of attack of 8.1 degrees. This can most easily be seen on the HUD by keeping the velocity indicator inside the E bracket. To the left of the HUD frame are the angle of attack indexer lights. When on speed, the center donut should be lit. Use of pitch trim is very important to set on speed AOA. Maintain on speed angle of attack during the downwind leg. Press spacebar to continue. Once your left wingtip is five seconds past the stern, begin a 30 degree bank to the left while keeping your velocity vector just below the horizon line on the HUD. This will place us in a steady rate of turn to the boat while descending. If the boat is moving with 25 to 30 knots of wind over the deck, start your turn when abeam the white of the round down on the stern of the boat. Your descent rate should be 100 to 200 feet per minute, as indicated on the HUD above the altitude box. 90 degrees through this turn, your altitude should be 500 feet. Past 90 degrees of turn, your descent rate should increase to 500 feet per minute. Only use your instruments for the first 90 degrees of turn. Don't peak. Use your throttle to control your rate of turn and pitch trim to control your airspeed. Press spacebar to continue. As you roll out on the landing course line, acquire the improved Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, or IFLOLS, and match your glide slope such that the center light stays centered between the two green lines. If the light moves above center, you are too high and need to reduce throttle. If the light is below center, you are too low and risk a ramp strike unless you increase power. You will fly to maintain on-speed AOA while keeping the ball centered. Prior to touchdown, do not flare the aircraft, but rather let it fly onto the boat at ideally 750 feet per minute, as indicated above your altitude on the HUD. Press spacebar to continue. Before we give this a whirl, let's first set up the landing course line. Using what you learned in the TACAN lesson, set the TACAN to 74 X-ray and the carrier BRC of 350 degrees. This is the TACAN channel for the carrier and it will provide us useful information to line up our downwind and final approach legs of the pattern. Set your HUD to show the radar altitude. To give us final notice when we should be passing over the wake of the boat when in the final turn, 
Set the radar altimeter by your right knee to 370 feet by spinning the knob counterclockwise. Finally, set your left DDI to the HUD and your right DDI to the FCS page. Press spacebar to unpause. We are now flying a heading of 352 degrees and 349 knots and 1,900 feet. Fly through the gates ahead, which will place us at 800 feet and offset to the right of the boat. We don't want to directly overfly the boat, so we can first check to see if the deck is foul. Maintain an airspeed of 350 knots. Anytime you approach the carrier with the intent to land, you should do a hail R check meaning check that the hook is down and engine anti-ice heat if required, anti-skid switch is off, ILS is boxed on the HSI when ICLS is being used, external lights are set for daytime, and rad out set to the HUD. Cage the velocity vector on the HUD by pressing the cage uncage button on the throttle or press C. Lower the arrestor hook by clicking on the lever or pressing H. When at 1.5 miles from the bow, set the throttles to idle and follow the gates for a 180 degree turn into the downwind leg. The rate of turn will be based on a G that is 1% of our airspeed, in this case 3.5 G for 350 knots. Once your airspeed is below 250 knots, lower your landing gear and set the flaps to full. Once on the downwind leg of 173 degrees, Establish on-speed AOA of 8.1 degrees by flying to maintain the velocity vector inside the E bracket on the HUD. Use nose up trim and throttle to set on-speed AOA, not your stick. Above the C cell indication in the bottom right corner of your HSI is your distance from the course line. This should be between 1.3 and 1.4 miles. Once your left wing tip is five seconds past the stern of the boat, start a 27 to 30 degree bank to the left while maintaining on-speed AOA. This is a bit tricky. Use the throttle to control your descent and pitch trim to control your angle of attack. If properly trimmed, you should only have to adjust throttle. Descent rate should be between 100 and 200 feet per minute for the first 90 degrees and 500 for the second 90 degrees. As your nose comes around to the boat's heading, uncage the velocity vector on the HUD and adjust glide slope based on ball position using the throttles. Use pitch trim to maintain on-speed AOA. Keep the velocity vector centered in the E bracket. Do not flare the aircraft, but rather continue on the glide slope and touch down around 750 feet per minute. Trust the ball. Once down, immediately go to full power in case of a bolter, the arrestor hook failing to hook an arrestor wire. Once at a halt, reduce thrust to idle. Congratulations on landing the Hornet. With practice, this will become second nature. Raise the arrestor hook, 
fold the wings, and taxi out of the landing area, also called the box. If you intend to taxi back to a catapult for takeoff, perform an FTRD check. Flaps to half, trim to total weight, rad alt to 40 feet, and HUD on the left EDI, in the checklist, and then the FCS on the right. You can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key.